Hello, this is Sunburst Baser, and this is a review of my Reverend Rumblefish. This is an American Reverend. Reverends are still being made, but now they are made in Korea, and they don't really have the same design. I get always asked lots of questions anytime I pull this base out. Uh, this has been my main base for about a decade now. So what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to show you a little bit about the bass and then I'm going to play the bass for you. So let's get in there. First off, I have had this bass for a decade and it might not look it, but this bass has seen some serious wear. For starters, if I can zoom in here, uh, you can kind of barely make it out there. The pickup covers are beginning to get cracked. and the knobs for the volume and tone control. The volume control is fine. The tone control, uh, the dome fell off. The, this black plastic thing was underneath the dome. And that is the pickup selector. I'll get to that in a little bit. Along with this, if I go up here, you can see that uh, one of those tuners is a little bit larger than the others. My G-string tuner got bent several years ago and I replaced it with a Goto, which is actually a higher quality. These originally came with Jing Ho tuners. Uh, the pickups, they, this is a fully passive bass guitar. The pickups are Reverend designed. I believe they were made by Kent Armstrong, since the early Reverends all used Kent Armstrong pickups. The only real modification I've done besides repairs to this bass, it does have Dunlop strap locks on it. And I just got this back from my tech, who did a fret crown on it, because this bass, between the about the 6th and the ninth frets, basically would not play. Now, an interesting thing about this bass, if you look at the headstock, it's kind of got a lightning bolt shape going on. And that is mirrored on the pit guard. One thing that sets this bass apart from others, this is a jazz bass, and what sets it apart from others, uh... The original Reverend Rumblefish was just a jazz bass, volume, volume, tone control setup. This one's a little bit different. This is called the XL model. And what it is, is we have a volume control on top, a tone control, which is now just a black knob, and a pickup selector. What the pickup selector does is, originally, it gave you a parallel position, which is what it's in now. In the middle, it would give you the neck pickup only. And if you pushed it to the right, it would give you a series setting, which would turn your pickups into a giant humbucker. Uh, I had this rewired so that it's still parallel, which is your standard jazz bass setting. But instead of a solo neck pickup, I have a solo bridge pickup, which gives it a little bit more of that Jocko honk. The bridge is slightly heavier than a fender bridge, but it's bolted into a piece of steel underneath the, uh, the top. Now, this piece of metal on the side here, that's an armrest. It's kind of like on your banjos. This base is hollow, or semi-solid. And the top and back are made out of phenolic, which is cutting board, effectively. And it's kind of got a, a sharp edge to it. So, Reverend put these metal arm guards on their bases and the guitars just to give your arm a place to sit so it wouldn't be, the phenolic wouldn't dig into it. And we're going to turn the base around here. Neck is maple with a rosewood fingerboard. The shape of this neck is a pre-CBS Fender Jazz neck. Uh, I've played a, a pre-CBS about 1963, I believe the underset was. The neck felt pretty much identical to that. It's a little bit rounder and a little bit... It's got a little bit more meat on the sides than a 70s neck, or it seems to in my case. Now here's an interesting thing about the design. The neck has just this little piece of overhang here, which actually does help improve upper fret axis. It's not as good as like a contoured neck heel, but it works. Also, the neck screws each have their own washer rather than a plate, like on a fender. And if you ever doubted that these were hollow, they very much are, as this one has got a battle scar to prove it. We're going to go plug this in now, and I'm going to show you how it sounds in a few different settings. Hi there, Sunburst Baser back again. 
Now we're going to take a listen to the bass guitar, the Reverend Rumblefish. Signal path here, we got the bass going into an electroharmonics polychorus that's been bypassed. We're just using that to get a stereo sound. That's going into an audio box USB and straight into the computer. So what you're getting is the straight sound of the bass. For starters, we're going to play this bass in parallel mode. This is the same as if you had both volumes all the way up on your regular jazz bass. And we are using DR, Marcus Miller strings. They are still fairly new, so we'll get a good idea of what it sounds like right now. This bass really has a lot of ring to it. A lot of lower end jazz basses that I've played, they don't have that almost piano like growl. And especially since I've got the frets redone on this, it really sings. It seems to have increased the volume too, probably because the string isn't uh, buzzing against all those low frets. Now, if we set it to the uh, bridge pickup mode, remember this was the neck pickup the way it was originally wired, but I had it redone. We get a little bit of that jock, jocko honk. But you'll notice it's not as much as with Jocko's own bass. Part of that is the bridge pickup is a pretty good distance from the bridge. So this bass, like if you wanted to do like Portrait of Tracy. do it but the harmonics don't ring out as well and it doesn't honk quite as much like if you're playing something like the chicken it still has some honk to it it's just not as much as say an actual fender jazz bass with the bridge pickup solo and certainly not as much as a 70s jazz with that pickup right up against the bridge almost now if i hit that switch one more time we're now in series mode now this turns this into one wide humbucker the sound is vaguely reminiscent of a Stingray pickup in a passive bass, if you've ever gotten to play one like that. It's somewhat like that. This also increases the output a lot, and I'm clipping all over. This gives it a real nice low mid-range punch. If you have ever had a problem with your jazz bass cutting through in the mix, a series switch like this, or Fender calls it the S1, it'll really make it punch through. Although some, for me, it's just a little bit too much. I dial in a little low mids in my amplifier and just play in parallel. That's kind of the way I like it. One thing about the Reverend is a lot of people don't like the sound of the Reverend bass when it's slapped. So I'm going to give you a clean slap, and then I'm going to play the same lick I'm going to EQ it a little bit, and hopefully you'll see, I think that these, the, at least the four string basses, are actually pretty good slappers. They're not the best, but they're pretty good for slap bass. So we're just going to play some chilies here, you know? See, to me, that's not nearly as bad a sound as some people say these are. Um, they also work great for like your classic stuff, like your Larry Graham. A little bright, but it sounds okay some people say that these basses just don't make good slap machines and in my experience when i'm running it through a bass amp they sound fine when they're slapped especially when they got new strings and these drs really i mean they're marcus miller strings they're made to slap
that, we're going to try that again. I'm going to play, uh, let's play some Chili's into Marcus Miller again. But this time, I'm going to do some editing, so I'm going to add some compression. I'm going to EQ it a little bit to show that this bass really can be a good slap bass. Let's try some Marcus, as long as we got the Marcus strings on there. One thing I like about this bass is that it responds really well to playing with a pick. One of my favorite bass players is Chris Squire of Yes. And let's just take a listen to this. Yeah. Ah! The bass responds really nicely to that kind of playing. I actually, I don't have it with me right now. I have used rubber picks on this bass and strung it with flat wounds and rolled that tone way off. And it does a really good job. I'll even set it to parallel mode here with the tone off. And it does a pretty good job of doing kind of that 60 thump bass. Great for you Paul McCartney enthusiasts, which again, Paul McCartney was probably the first bass player that I seriously listened to. You know, songs like that or... Sounds great for that kind of stuff. Yeah. I typically don't play that style of bass very often, but every once in a while I, I do. And I play in a country band right now, so very occasionally I get to do that kind of stuff or roll the tone off and get the... Uh, Kind of real basic country bass playing, but my style is more the uh, the funk style, and this bass it works great for that kind of playing. So that's the Reverend Rumblefish in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed it. See you around. <laughs>